Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Anoint this video like no other video before it, Father. We praise you and I bless your name. Lord God, every viewer who watches and shares this video, bless them in a special way. Thank you, Jesus. What's going on, everybody? I got a powerful word for you guys. I was up this morning uh, spending time with the Lord, spending time with the word, talking with pa uh, pastor. And the Lord told me to speak to you guys about this. It's about to make a lot of probably religious people um, upset. But first thing I want to start off is Peter and Paul writing the New Testament, building the church. They didn't even agree on everything 100 percent. Peter and Paul were debating on how to deal with the Gentiles and what they should eat and what they shouldn't eat and circumcision and uncircumcision. And they were having a disagreement. The people who were writing the Bible, right, these men of God, both spirit filled, were having a disagreement. How is that possible? It's possible because flesh gets in the way. It's possible because feelings and emotions and our ideology gets in the way of God. You can be spirit filled, but the thing is, are you leaning more in your feelings and your flesh? Are you really allowing the spirit to lead you and guide you? The reason why most modern Christians are going to hell is because they have a form of godliness, like Timothy says, but they deny the power thereof, right? You go to church, you go through the religious motions, you go to church and you sing two songs and you listen to what sounds like a good sermon. A lot of people can't tell the difference and I'm about, I feel the fire coming on me. As soon as I get up this neighborhood, I'm about to go hard. A lot of people, they can't tell the difference between the anointing and uh, just somebody preaching something that sounds good because they're not familiar enough with their spirit, right? You spend all day feeding your carnal man. Now, unfortunately, living in this world that we're living in, your carnal man is getting fed consistently. Every time you log into social media, you're watching movies and different commercials, you're always people messing with you and bothering you and attacking you. There's always uh, your carnal man being appealed to. So you have to make the time one thing the Lord told me, he said, enter into my gates with thanksgiving, enter my courts with praise. A lot of people spend their whole time never entering into the holies of holies. You stay in the outer gates and you go to church and go through religious motions and you sing the songs and you, you know what? You go to church and you worship God like you're making a payment for a debt, like you're paying your phone bill. Okay, I worship the Lord. I'm good. I paid a bill. No, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is lifting up your hands and singing a couple songs. Worship is an actual lifestyle and the way that you live your life. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. What does that mean? Say, you know, we live in a world of compromise, a living sacrifice, saying no to the things that my flesh wants to say yes to. I'm presenting my body, my temple as a living sacrifice to the Lord. So the reason why a lot of Christians are going to hell is because they're not familiar with the spirit of God. With, and they read the word of God and they listen to preachers who preach the word of God, but they don't interpret the scripture the correct way. They read the Bible from a place of their feelings. And they're going to ask you this, and we were talking about this this morning. Why are Muslims not really arguing amongst Muslims and they kind of agree pretty much on their doctrine and their scripture and Jehovah's Witnesses? and all these other religions, you don't see them debating and arguing the way that Christians argue. Why? Because Christians have the real truth. Christians have the real word of God. And the enemy is trying to put a poison in there that causes division. He's trying to put a poison in there and you have all these false prophets and false preachers. Oh, you can still drink and be saved. And then on, so you've got the people who are very liberal, you know, just doing whatever you want to do and God is still going to love you. And the thing is, God has a standard and God has an order in his word. You can't just do whatever you want to do. Oh my God, I just feel the Holy Spirit on me so strong. Share this video. I'm about to go completely off. I'm sitting here in front of this Catholic church. And the first thing I see over here is some looks like idols. You can say from the Old Testament, there's one over there and there's one over here. Look at this big building, big old building. People going to church every Sunday don't have the truth. But look at this. Look at this. You know what this just made me think of? We don't raise up actual physical idols anymore, but we have idols in our life like Netflix and social media and, um, you know, relationships. Anything that you put before God is an idol. You can make yourself an idol because you know what? You're so concerned. You look at this, man. There's a heart on the ground. I can't even make this stuff up. You're so in love with yourself 
Look how it makes a, a, a box all around me. I'm so in love with myself. I'm so full of myself that there's no room for God to flow. I'm so full of myself that there's no room for God to pour anything inside of me. I can't step into the supernatural. I can't step into the greater things of God because my whole life I'm concerned with just me, me, me. And I've made myself an idol. And I can never, I'm so, so worried about being happy. I'm so, you know what I told uh, you guys the other day? I said, if the Lord cracked this guy. If he cracked the sky right now and he said, tomorrow, I'm coming to get my church at 2 p.m., a lot of people will begin to say, oh, oh, don't come get me, Lord. Just give me two more weeks. Just give me another month because I I've never been married and I've never had sex before. And I was going to go to the Bahamas next week. We're more in love with the things of this earth. And a lot of people go to church and they feel like they do the bare minimum because when I die, you know, I, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. So let me do the bare minimum just to get by. And that's why we have people, these false preachers that are rising up and preaching that you can compromise and you can live however you want to live and it's not works that save you but works is a reflection of heart. So it's known by the fruit it bears. Whatever you're rooted in, it should be produced in your life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks through your actions. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's some things that need to change in you and transform in you. And see, if you don't allow it to transform, you're denying the power. You have a form of godliness, but denying the power of God to transform you and deliver you and break away that man. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. So what happens is, and I'm going to give you some examples, and the religious people are going to get mad. I had a woman message me this morning. She said, oh, you're in a church where they allow the woman to wear pants, so I can see that you guys don't have no holiness standards. Holiness is not determined by your outward appearance. Now, the Bible does say for you to dress in modesty, but this is why it's important to have the spirit. The verse they like to use is, oh, a man should not wear what pertaineth to a woman, and a woman should not pertaineth to, uh, wear what pertaineth to a man. They interpret that scripture wrong somebody said oh men uh, men wear pants and women wear skirts but that's that's backwards thinking because in the bible men were wearing skirts they said oh you can't have a beard in the bible men were having beards so let me explain to you how powerful the bible is the bible is a living word right that by Bi that bible verse was pretty much talking about transgenders and people who dress with the appearance that i'm a man but i want to give off the appearance that i'm a woman that's what it was talking about. But see, you know why most people don't know that? Because they read the Bible from a place of their feelings instead of letting the spirit, okay, reveal all truth to them. If you read the Bible from a place where you let the spirit reveal to you what is in the word of God, it's going to show you some things. It'll begin to reveal to you, for example, that some of the things the Bible was talking about at the time was because of the culture. Some of the things that when people talk about women can't preach. The Bible says that there's neither male nor female, all right, in, in Christ, but we are all one to the hairs of, hairs of the promise. So women can't preach, right? God can use whoever he wants. He put the Holy Spirit inside of anybody. So if a woman is willing and God wants to use her, she could preach, she can evangelize. I'm not saying she could pastor in my personal opinion and in my interpretation of the scripture. But when, when, when Paul was talking about a lot of things, the Holy Spirit, when you read it, it was because of the culture. Because of the culture of that time, women were silent. You see, you see what I'm saying? And when they went to the temple, the men went in, but people pick and choose what they want to take in the Bible and slam people over the head to act holier than thou. And we talk about all of these sins, right? And we want to pick and choose what sins we talk about. Like one is worse than the other. But the reality is that pride is just as a bad sin as everything else. Now check this out. This is, this is the awesome part right here. You see this cross right here? It's one cross one way, one truth. Jesus didn't die on multiple crosses for the different sins. He died on one cross for the homosexual. He died on one cross for the person with the pride problem. He, he died on one cross for the school shooter. He died on one cross for every prisoner, no matter what crime they committed. So that's why we can't be self-righteous because the reality is without this one cross, without this one God, without this one way, all of us would go to one hell in the same place. The person that you were judging and acting holier than thou, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ and what he did for you on that cross, 
else, you would be in the same hell. See, the, uh, I'm going to mess with y'all, some of y'all religious people. He said, if you are guilty of breaking one of these commandments, you are guilty of breaking them all. What does that really mean? You're judging somebody for being homosexual like they're so much worse and dirty than you. But the Lord says, if you've got a proud look, to me, you're a homosexual and you're a murderer and you're a thief and you're a cheat and you're all of it. You're all of it because I paid one price for all sin. See, we're doing the church wrong. Now, let me show you something. Because we're in a place where Christianity has become so watered down and so casual, and I'm always telling you guys that, man, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. Casual, ca casual Christians will be casualties. A lot of Christians are looking at what's going on in this world and they're leaning to their own understanding. Their ideology has become an idol. Your way of thinking has become an idol. Your, 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 your skin color has become an idol. And so because you're looking at this idol, you can't see the bigger picture. Because you're looking at this idol, you can't, you can't see in the spiritual. Because you spend all your time looking at Netflix, you can't see the greater things that God wants to show you. It's blocking you. There's so many believers who are walking to destruction because your pride is an idol. You can't receive the truth. Because your pride is an idol, you can't receive correction. So you're walking into destruction and you're walking in the ways of this world. That's why God will use uh, 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 certain things that are going on in the world. People like Donald Trump and President Obama, he uses the, read the book of Corinthians, the first four chapters, how he, the, the people who think that they're wise, he will use foolish things to make them look like fools because God wants you to know that you need the spirit. See, the Lord could allow somebody to become a president who everybody would like and everybody would have it figured out, but he allows somebody like Donald Trump to get into office to expose who's really being led by the spirit. We, we, um, wrestle not against flesh and blood there's so many people and i always tell you this check this out there's so many people when the whole world hollywood and the media and the and, and the lgbtq community and most of the sinners and most of the country when they're walking in this direction the bible says broad is the way that leads to i feel the holy ghost broad is the way that leads to destruction but narrow is the way that leads to eternal life so check this out this this little sidewalk man i feel the holy ghost is broad right it's bigger it's wider more people can fit on it so if you see the whole world in agreement, moving in a certain direction and you're a christian and you're moving with them and you're leaning to their understanding and you're leaning to their thinking and you're fighting the battles of this world the same way they are and you're addressing the things of this world the same way they are you're probably on the wrong path you probably want to reevaluate yourself and say man maybe i need to move over here because this path is narrower Everybody, the Bible says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. There's a difference there. But people, people feel comfortable here, right? Because if you're sitting here on the broad way, you're accepted. But if you're sitting here on the narrow way, you're not as popular. That's why people like, and I'm going to use the example because this is what God gave me and I'm going to paint it in a way that you can understand it. I'm not saying that these people are holy. I'm not saying that these people are saved, but Kanye West is walking on a narrow path. Most people, black people think from a, a, a position, right, of um, oppression and being a victim. So most black people are over here, right, comfortable. So now since we're all over here, we must be right. Since the majority of us are over here thinking a certain way, we must be right. And anybody who's over here thinking on this narrow path where there's few of you, no, 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 you guys, we're going to bash you and we're going to attack you for being on this road. What God showed me, he said, what's happening to Donald Trump and Kanye West in the media, the way they bash him and attack him and bring up their past, that's what's going to happen to Christians. All right, that's exact. That's what God told me. That's exactly what's going to happen to Christians. And some of you can't see it because, see, the devil, he doesn't come and say, I'm the devil. He comes as an angel of light. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong, man. Some of you, I can feel the chains breaking off of people's mind. He gains a little bit of ground, like one square at a time, one piece of territory at a time, little by little. He just, he just like, you see it in the schools, right? They're teaching the curriculum, uh, LGBTQ community, and all these things that go against God. The Bible says the spirit of the Antichrist is already among you. It's already flowing and working among you. It's already building a stage that is preparing the way for the Antichrist to come 
in and to make his entrance, right? So that's why you have all the chaos in the world. That's why you have all the division in the world because the world is gonna be so chaotic that the Antichrist is gonna come in offering peace and offering a solution. That's why you see people fighting with the police. You think the police are gonna go somewhere because we're fighting them and attacking them and bashing them and talk about justice? No, the more that we disrespect them, they're gonna give the police more power. That's gonna give, an, give them an excuse to militarize the police. That's gonna, you're not gonna make the police go away. You probably won't even make the police change. But see, a lot of people don't see that. The stage, the platform is being built for the Antichrist to come in to have complete control. What you see with President Trump and the presidency, the way the media attacks him, right? He made a statement the other day. And I'm just going to give you an example. He's talking about MSN, MS-13 gang members. He said the MS-13 gang members are animals. And they took it and they said, oh, you know, he says uh, illegal immigrants are animals. That's not what he said. He said MS-13 members, what they do, they're animals, the way they kill, the way they slaughter people. But the media wants to control the way that you think. So the media sits there and they put a twist on it. And you sit there and you open yourself up to it and you feed it and it's like you're a puppet. And they're telling you what to think, how to think, because they want you to vote a certain way so certain people can be in power. Now check this out. It's the same thing with our young generation that they're raising up, right? They're teaching these kids, they're indoctrinating them in the schools that the, the, the way that goes against the Lord is normal. Homosexual marriage, that's why they say you can't opt out of it. Your kids will take this class and you're not allowed to say that they're not gonna take it, right? Because they're trying to indoctrinate these young children so that when these children become 18, what happens? They go and they vote a certain way because now, you taught me that a man being with a man and a woman being with a woman and, and all these things that go against God, that's okay. So now that I'm older, I'm going to look at Christians as the problem. I'm going to look at Christians as the sickos. I'm going to look at Christians as the delusional ones. And so when somebody comes to me and they're preaching holiness and they come to me and they're preaching righteousness and they're coming to me standing on the word of god no you're you're crazy you're off and they're trying that's what they're trying to do is indoctrinate your children and not only that so they're going to vote against it because they're going to feel like that is the moral correct thing to do let's put some laws into place to raise up what god showed me like the golden statue the golden statue that was raised up with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there's a golden statue that is being raised now, and it's an ideology, and it's a way of thinking, and if you don't bow down to it, if you don't come step on the broad path, and you decide to walk on the narrow path, you're going to be persecuted, but check this out. I'm almost going to end this video, but I'm going to say this last little spill. The Lord is saying that the gray area is going to be removed, all right? Right now, we live in a Christianity where people can have one foot in the world, and they can have one foot in the church, they're kind of compromising. And because there's no persecution, because nobody's really forcing you to take a side, people have been getting away with that. But mark my words, with the next election that is coming, that gray area is gonna begin to shrink and you're gonna have to make a decision. So imagine this, thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna use these squares again. You've got three squares here. I got one square, I got two square, I got three square. This square right here is the world. This square right here is the church. And what they're trying to do, most people, is have one foot in the world and trying to have one foot in the church, right? The problem with that is that when I spread my legs and I stretch myself, check it out. Boom, one foot in the world, one foot in the church. You see how it lowers me? It lowers my perspective. But if I decide to take both of my feet and have a made up mind and bring it together, you see how it increases my height? how it increases my thinking, how it increases my perspective. A lot of people are not enlightened because you can't understand the things of God, because you can't function in the spirit of God, because you're compromising and having one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And the more that you spread yourself, it lowers you to a level where you can't comprehend and understand the things of God. That's why when I talk about a lot of things that I'm talking about, people are confused and they think that I'm crazy and they think that I'm doing too much, but you you are not spending proper time with the Lord. You're not spending the proper time in relationship and fellowship with God. And that is why you can't comprehend the things that I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? The more you stretch out with one foot in the world and one foot in the church, look at all these people coming out. All these people coming out and they don't have the truth. All these people coming out going through religious motions. And like I said in the beginning of this video, Peter, Peter and Paul didn't even agree on everything. They were arguing right so that lets you know that even the people that we in christian faith put up there high on the pedestal 
They didn't even have all the answers. They were relying on the spirit of God to lead them and guide them in all truth. A lot of people are reading the Bible and they're not interpreting it right through the power of the Holy Spirit. I can tell when people have a, a strong connection with the Lord because the, the Holy Spirit is evident in their life. And then obviously just small things. It's not even that deep. Fruits of the Spirit, right? If you can't forgive, if you can't love your enemy, if you can't bless those who curse you, right? You don't have the fruits of the Spirit being evident in your life. I think I'm going to end the video right there, but I, I just feel such a strong call to repent. And you know what's very sad? Some people are walking into destruction and they don't even know it. Some people are lost and they don't even know it. What a sad thing to think that you're going to heaven and then to stand before the Lord on judgment day and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Are you really ready to go? Do you have the confidence in your relationship? See, see, and people, religious people and these people who don't know what they're talking about, you're talking about salvation through works. No, see, these once saved, always saved people, the Bible says, yeah, nothing can pluck you from the hand of God, but God gave you free will. I feel led in the spirit to talk about that because somebody is watching this and they're saying he's a false prophet because he's saying what Jesus did on the cross wasn't enough. You don't have the Holy Spirit. I can say that with confidence. I know you don't because God gave us free will. Check this out. What, when Jesus created the garden, he said it was good, right? Everything he created in the garden, he said it was good. But then man came in the garden and he messed it up. When Jesus hung on the cross, he said it was finished. Just like he said it was good. It was more than enough. It was already done. But we can still mess it up. Why? Because of our free will. You can reject your salvation. You can walk away from the truth. You can choose to backslide. The Bible says the devil's come to kill, steal, and destroy. He doesn't attack the people in the, in the world like that because they're already lost. He attacks the people in the church. Why? He's trying to steal what God has put inside of you. Once saved, I'm not saying that you're saved by works. Your works are a reflection of where your heart is. If you're really rooted in Jesus, you're not going to want to sin. You're not going to want to do wrong. But that doesn't mean that you can't be tempted. That doesn't mean that you can't fall short. Man, I'm telling you, you can say what people who get mad about this kind of preaching are lukewarm Christians. People who get mad about these kind of this kind of preaching is people who want to have one foot in the world, one foot in the church. They want to live however they want to live. And the reality is they don't really want relationship with God. They just don't want to go to hell when they die. They go to church and they do just enough so that, you know what, I, I just don't want to go to hell when I die. And they're, they're so willing to believe a watered down gospel. They're so willing to believe some watered down scripture because they want to believe that, oh, I'm secure no matter what I do. I can keep sinning. No, if you keep sinning and you keep doing wrong, that's a reflection of your heart. You have a form of godliness, but you're denying the power thereof to transform you and break the chains in your life. When, when you have an, a, a true a true experience with God something has to change in your life you cannot go into the holies of holies you cannot go into the presence of God and go in the same way that you came out something has to change and God is you know what I'm telling you the gray area is about to shrink persecution is about to come to the church you watch the next election I if I begin to tell you everything that God showed me and all of the visions that he gave me some of you wouldn't be able to receive it some of you would think that I'm crazy and you know why it's because you don't really have the Spirit of God living inside of you so you can't comprehend the Spirit you better go read first Corinthians chapter 1 through 4 all these people in this world who think that they are wise they are fools and in the end every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is is Lord that Jesus Christ is King of Kings so I tell you today repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and people say oh you've been saying the kingdom of God is at hand for 2,000 years you guys have been saying this for years and years but let me tell you the God that I serve the creator of this universe he created time and space time and space do not contain him he sits outside of time and space he sits outside of it so what has been a thousand years to you may have only been the blink of an eye to him what has been a thousand years to you may have only been a breath to him my god i feel the holy ghost on me right now you need 
the Holy Spirit in your life. You need a serious relationship with God in these end times. You need to be spending time fasting and praying. See, what most Christians do nowadays, we complain about stuff more than we pray about it. You complain about your spouse and you gossip about your situation and you say, oh Lord, please change my situation. But because you're not led by the Spirit, you can't see that God is using the situation to change you. You say, oh Lord, fix my spouse, fix my mom, fix my dad. And you never sit there and say, Lord, what about me? What is me? What are you trying to fix in me? What are you trying to change in me? What are you trying to shape in me? What are you trying to make in me? What are you trying to break in me? You're taking me through the wilderness to prepare me for the promised land. You took Joseph through the pit and through the prison to shape his character, to prepare him for the palace. But we want to complain and we want to whine. When he said, take up your cross, not your vacation packet, he didn't promise that it was going to be easy. He didn't promise that every day was going to be sunshine and beautiful. Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice. But he said, he who endures, he who endures, he who endures till the end shall be saved. Take up your cross and follow in my footsteps. I suffered. I was persecuted. Persecuted. I was laughed. I was talked about. A prophet is not always received in his own home. See, if you live for the acceptance of people, you will die from their rejection. Every time somebody's not singing your praises, every time somebody's not giving you a pat on the back, when you put your faith in people, it will destroy you. The only opinion that you should live for is the opinion of God because it's the only opinion that matters. People's opinion can't save you. People's opinion can't promote you. People's opinion can't get you into the gate. People's opinion can't take you to the next level. All people's opinions can do is imprison you. And that's the problem with the modern day church. We have a bunch of people preaching their opinions and they're not led by the spirit. And I tell you right now, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The gray area is about to shrink. A lot of you have been living in the gray area of Christianity. You're neither hot nor cold. You're just going through the religious motions. But God is allowing everything that is happening in the political world, everything that is happening in the laws and the courts, because there is a time that is coming where God is about to start exposing the fake. And you can laugh at me and you can mock me and you can ridicule me, but I guarantee you, you better get close to the Lord. You better spend time with the Lord and we get away from all that religious garbage and crap that people are teaching. This is, this is how religious people think. They say, oh, I'm up here and you're down there because I've always lived righteous and I've always lived holy and I've got my suit and I've got my tie and I've got my skirt because you know the Bible says that a woman shouldn't uh, wear what pertaineth to a man and a man shouldn't wear it. So since you're not wearing a skirt and since your hair doesn't look like this and since you have a beard and since you have earrings, you know, you're not as holy as me and, and that's all feelings, you know, and it has nothing, God is so far away from that because man looks at the outward appearance but God looks at the heart. See, holiness is not about your outward appearance, all right? It's about what is in your heart. And if your heart is correct, the outside will line up. But people have an opinion of what the outside should look like. But God is the one that really knows. And if you really have the spirit of God, it will convict you. Now, somebody said, oh, wear skirts or you're not saved. No, 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 no. That's a man's opinion. The spirit will tell you, hey, baby, that's a little bit too tight. Hey, son, that's a little bit too tight. Hey, daughter, that you're revealing a little bit too much right there. It will convict you. I've seen people in the church come in and feel convicted by the Holy Spirit. But a lot of people aren't preaching Holy Spirit. They're preaching their feelings and their emotions, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees. If you don't do this my way, if you don't have my approval, then you cannot be saved. But I tell you once again what I said in the Bible, two spirit-filled men. And pure and Paul didn't even agree on everything. But we feel because we've made our ideology, ideology an idol, if you don't agree with me, you're a false prophet. Why is it that Christianity has so much division? Look at that. The bells are sounding. That's a warning. <laughs> The alarm is sounding. I'm sounding the alarm right now that the time has come. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. God is about to pour out his fire and his Holy Spirit like never before, like never before. He's raising up a generation that won't 
live in gray area. I will be hot. I will not be cold. I will not bow down to the ideologies of the world. I will not bow down to the pressure. What you see happening to Kanye West and Donald Trump is going to happen to Christians and you're going to have to make a decision. And if you don't have a faith, if you haven't been spending time with the Lord, you will be a casualty. You will sell out immediately and you say, oh, well, it's not going to happen and you're talking too crazy. Why is it that the things that we used to talk about and see in movies, we see happening now and we're so unaware? I'll give you an example. Your phones, they can track you. They've got facial recognition to technology. People are taking chips and all that kind of stuff in their arms now. All of that kind of stuff is happening in the world that we're living in with technology, right? I could take a picture, post it, they know who I am. They can listen into conversations on your phone, laptops. Eric Snowden and those guys exposed it and talked about it. Why? These are measures to control you. The Lord told me, I told you guys this every video with the police. He said, you see what's happening with the police? I said, yes, Lord. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, look beyond the police. And what the Lord showed me, he said, there's a generation rising up with no respect for authority. They don't respect the police. They don't respect teachers. They don't respect their elders. They don't respect their parents. They don't respect anything. They have no respect for authority. Timothy talks about a lawless generation rising up, a rebellious generation. They look for a reason to rebel. That's the kind of generation that is rising up right now. We got to pray for our kids. We got to pray for the next generation. The Lord showed me, he said, with the police, he said, they don't respect authority. The authority's not going to go anywhere. They're just going to empower the authority even more. Yes, there's some police that are corrupt, but the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If you are a child of God, no matter what you face in this world, racism, division, bitterness, molestation, rape it might be unfair yes but the reality is if the spirit of god the same spirit that raised christ from the dead is living inside of you how can you be in bondage to fear he whom the son has set free is free indeed where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty man i'm preaching i'm preaching i feel the holy spirit on me and for some reason i can't stop the video i know it's a little bit longer it's time to smash the idols in your life some of you know what i'm talking about but you have no sense of urgency because the world has you so watered down that the Bible says, when you see these things happening, look to the sky for your redemption draweth nigh. Pretty soon Jesus is going to crack the sky, but people have got so complacent and water. If you really knew how close we were to the Lord's return, you would run and you say, man, let me get over here and let me run to my idols. And let me smash down these idols in my life that are causing me to compromise, that are causing me to see what God wants me to see, that are blocking me from my blessing, that are blocking me from my increase. I would run and I would smash them and I would take the hammer of the word of God and I would destroy them. Anything that is hindering me from getting closer to God. Any, man, I'm about to preach a message here in California on Sunday. It's probably going to be the most amazing message I've ever preached, man. Oh, and I don't even want to share it with you now because I want to share it on Sunday. But I tell you what, there's a shaking coming and the Lord is about to reveal some stuff. He is about to reveal some stuff. He's about to reveal the fakeness. He's about to reveal the, the lukewarmness. All this stuff happening with Trump and Israel and all this stuff going on in America. We're about to see that Joel chapter two generation, just dreams and visions and the miraculous and people rising up with such a fire, but they're going to be persecuted because of it. You know, when I went to my army court case and I was sitting in there, you know, and they had the board up there and they called in uh, my witnesses. They called one of my bosses from Virginia. And when he got on the thing and he t I was talking to him the other day and he said, you know, son, the first thing that they asked me and I was in there, they said, have you ever seen Sergeant Rogers preaching the gospel? That's what they asked him. Have you ever seen Sergeant Rogers preaching the gospel but let me show you what the world is doing most of the world isn't preaching the gospel they're preaching their feelings and they're using the church as a business right the broad way leads to destruction the narrow way leads to eternal life if you don't remember anything else i said in the video most of the world is walking on the Broadway. So wherever you see the majority going and they're saying, this is a good idea. This is who we should vote for. This is the way that we should go. 
The Bible says God uses the foolishness of the world to confound the wise. The people who think that they're so smart and so wise, and they're looking at somebody like me, and they're, oh, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. The reason why they can't see the truth, they can't even see that they're on the Broadway, is because the idols in their life, they promote culture over kingdom. They promote skin color over kingdom. They're focused more on what did we say in the beginning of this video, this little heart. They're so focused on themselves, their happiness, their feelings, their emotions that they haven't fully really surrendered to God and said, man, I, I want to let you just, when, when, have you really ever prayed this prayer? Lord God, do whatever you want in my life. Shake me, make me, break me, mold me, whatever it takes. Take full control of my life. My life is yours. I give it to you to do whatever you want. No, most of our prayers, the little heart on the ground, it's all about me. And the me is an idol in your life. I don't want to do that because it doesn't feel good. I don't want to forgive because no way I've got pride. I, I don't want to sacrifice. I don't want to compromise. I don't want to, uh, me, 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 me. The idols in your life are blocking you and you can't even see the destruction. But now, see, look, oh, I thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of you can't even beat the idols in your own life. How are you going to beat the idol that the world is constructing that they're about to tell you to bow down to? Some of you are just bowing down to the idols in your life. You just bow down to them, bow down to them. Every time you're defeated, every time, no power, no victory, having a form of godliness. You sit in there all week and you keep bowing down to your idol, bowing down to your sin, bowing down to your temptation, bowing down to your past, bowing down to your failing, bowing down to your defeat. You just keep bowing down, bowing down. And then you come to church and you sing two songs and you listen to the preaching and you get motivated. And then Monday through Saturday, you're bowing down to your idol, Bowing down to the club, bowing down to the pressure of the world, bowing down to what your mama said about you, bowing down to what your daddy said about you, bowing down to what your ex said about you, and you're not living in freedom, and you're just like the rest of the world who's walking on the broad path, but the Lord is looking for some believers that he can call to walk the narrow way, and they say, yep, I'm on the narrow way over here, and you're on the broad way over here, and as I'm walking the narrow way, you're persecuting me, and you're talking about me, and you want me, you want to bully me, and you want to peer pressure, oh, Jesus. I like using the example with the black people the best because of the things with the slavery, but it applies to everybody. So I'll end the video with this. There's a thing in, in, in the black culture, right? You're not thinking black enough. You're not acting black enough. So if you talk a certain way, you know, or you, you have a different perspective than the majority of the African-American community and you're sitting over here like somebody like Kanye West and you're thinking for yourself and being free, what do they, what do, they do? The people on the broad path, they see you on the narrow path and they start cracking that whip on you and they say, hey, you get back over here on the broad path and bow down to this idol, bow down to this way. Ah, I feel the Holy Ghost. Share this video right now. Somebody needs it. When they watch this video, it's going to break some chains. They say, no, get back over here and you bow down to this way of thinking. And if you don't, we're going to crack this whip on you and we're going to beat you up and we're going to talk about you. And that's not and that's with everybody. That could be with your family members. That could be with your ex. You say, you know what? Mm, Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. That could be with your ex. They say, hey, we're going to keep on living in sin and keep on living in a way. And you just bowing down, bowing down. And you say, you know what? I'm breaking away from my ex. I'm breaking away from that lifestyle because I want to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. And then your ex starts talking about you and trying to pressure you. Do you come back and live in a way that's contrary to the word of God and say, no, come bow down to this idol with me. And God is calling you to separate yourself from people who are walking on the broad bra path the way that leads to destruction and to run over here and say I'm breaking away I know you're trying to hold me back I know you're trying to persecute me and get to bow down to my feelings and my emotions and your way of thinking but no I'm breaking away and I'm never looking back like Lot's life because when Lot's wife looked back oh Jesus oh thank you father I feel the anointing so strong oh my gosh when Lot's wife looked back she got salty the devil wants you to look back when you're walking on this narrow path and look back at the broad path and, and, and start wishing like, man, I remember the good days when I, when I used to go to the club and I remember the good days when, when we used to be together and compromise and, and I remember the good days when I used to fornicate and I remember the good days when I used to sell drugs and, and get that, that easy money and, and get that quick money. But now that, that I'm walking on the narrow path, but see the narrow path, it might be a little bit rougher. <laughs> it might be a little bit tougher. But check this out. Last thing I'm going to say to you guys. Thank you, Jesus. The things that you feel that are blocking your life that you can't overcome. The things that are in your life 
that are hindering you, the things in your past that hurt you, your past, if you make up your mind and say, I'm gonna get away off of this broad path and cut away whatever I need to cut away so I can get on the narrow path, check this out. The wages of sin is death. So we see the cross over there. Jesus hung on the cross, paid the price for us. But just imagine if you, before you could sin, before you could walk on this broad way, right? Imagine there was a toll right here, just like when you're riding on the expressway. And before you can get on this broad path, you had to pay the price for your sins. If you knew what your sin would cost you, you would never get on this path. But what the enemy does is he allows you to get on this path first and you live your life and you do whatever you want to do. Oh my Jesus, I feel the, the, this is the best video I've ever done and I didn't plan none of this. Check this out. There's a narrow path right here. There's a broad path right here. And then when you walk this broad, broad path, it, it leads to another narrow path. There's no escaping it. What am I saying right now? The devil will allow you and God will too because of your free will to reject the narrow path your whole life and walk this broad one with the world. You'll walk it, but when it's all said and done, if either you die from old age, you die because tomorrow's not promised you, an accident, a stray bullet, whatever it is, or when Jesus cracks the sky, you spent your whole life walking the broad way, but eventually you hit another narrow way. And at the end of that path, there's a judgment. And look what we have over here. Thank you, Jesus. Every single person, whether you took that narrow way or you took that broad way, it all leads to one place. And you come and you stand before Jesus and you will be judged for the way that you lived your life. And from this perspective where Jesus is at on his throne, he can see everything. He can see, did you take the narrow way? Or did you take the broad way? And my word says that broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. I wanna close this video a little different than any other video that I've ever done before. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Wherever you're sitting right now, look at your life, look at your friends, look at those who surround you, look at the choices that you make and ask yourself, Am I living on the broad way or am I walking the narrow way? The broad way, right, I'm harboring unforgiveness to somebody who hurt me. The Lord says, how can I forgive you if you won't forgive those around you? How can I give grace to you if you won't give grace? You're supposed to be a reflection of me. What I did on the cross, you were, I put my spirit inside of you, so why don't I see the fruits of the spirit evident in your life? If the fruits of the spirit are not evident in your life, you're not walking on the narrow way. You're walking on the broad way. The narrow way says, look, and this is why you have to have faith. I know you hurt me. I know you did me wrong. I know you cheated on me. I know you molested me. I know you broke my heart. I know you wasn't there for me, dad, but I'm gonna forgive you. I'm gonna walk the narrow way. A lot of people wouldn't do this because they would, they would want revenge and they would wanna be mad and they would wanna be in a pity party. But I know you did all of those ugly things. And you know what, even if you don't accept my apology, and even if you never apologize to me, I'm gonna forgive you. And I'm gonna surrender and I'm gonna let go and let God have it. I don't have to fight you. I don't have to argue with you. I don't have to say, oh Jesus, I feel the Holy, I've never felt it like this in a video before. I don't have to waste my time being distracted from my destiny that can only be found on the narrow path, sitting here on the broad path, arguing with you about how you hurt me. I don't have to spend the rest of my life sitting here on the broad path trying to tell you what God has called me. I'm going to go over here to the narrow path. The Lord told me to build the ark. I'm building the ark. I know a lot of you over here on the broad path are laughing at me and I'm telling you that it's going to rain and I'm telling you to repent because Jesus is coming soon and I know that you're laughing at me, but look at the clouds. The rain is coming. The rain is about to fall. I, I, I know that the signs are all there. It's not, it's not raining yet, but if you, you don't have to be a Bible scholar to see that the earth is moving in a general direction. There, there's some clouds in the sky that let me know that it's about to rain. It, I haven't felt a drop yet. Every now and then there's a, there's a drop and I feel the, uh, the move of the Holy Spirit, and I feel the confirmation, and I get revelation and, and illumination, but, but it's only because I'm walking on the narrow way. The people who are in the broad path, 
They see me building the ark. They see me saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And they see the clouds, but they're unaware. And there's people who are in the church who call themselves Christians, and they're walking on the broad path. And the Lord is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of me. When you see these things happen in the world, look to the sky for your redemption draweth nigh. And you call me crazy because you stand on the broad path and you're not standing in a place where you can understand because you're not on the narrow path, because you're living in compromise, because you never feed your spirit, man. Every day you wake up, it's like you have one bowl, one bowl of soup. Are you going to feed your spirit, man? Or are you going to feed your carnal man? Do you sit there and pray prayers just so you can say, oh, I prayed a quick prayer, so, so I, did, I, I did God? Or, or do you have a relationship with God? Do you really have a relationship with God? If the, the Bible is a bride, right? The Bible says where the church is a bride. If I'm married and I have a wife and I don't flirt with her, I don't compliment her, I don't spend no time with her, I don't talk to her, and then I just want to come home and use her for sex and stuff like that, she's not going to feel too good about that. That's what people do with hookers. And the bride of Christ is not a hooker. Unfortunately, people who claim to be the bride of Christ, they look like a hooker. Trying to sell, sell all this kind of nonsense to people. But why do we do that to God? We don't spend time with him. We don't worship him. We don't love on him. We do what we want to do, but then when we're in trouble on the Broadway, we want to ring the little bell and treat him like a butler. That's not relationship. You're using him. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. I can't see how you can't see it with everything that is going on in the world. I can't see how you can't see it. How can you see what's going on with Israel right now, moving the capital, all the stuff that the Bible prophesied and the chaos and the missiles and the things that they're doing in, in, in Gaza and, and, and Syria? How can you not see it with the way this generation is raising up and they rebel? Things we've just people, you know, unheard of kids punching elders in the face, fighting police out, just complete lawlessness and destruction. Exactly what the Bible say. How can you not see it? How can you not be woke? How can you not say, Lord, I, I need you like, like never before. Break, break the idols in my life. Break my will. I surrender completely to you. I sur you know, the things that I'm worried about, I really don't even need to be so worried about, you know, because if I died tomorrow and I spent all my time worrying about this, then I wasted my life. I wasted my life on the Broadway, worrying with everybody else instead of ever walking off into my destiny and everything that you've called me to be. Thank you, Jesus. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for your prayers. We're about to rock it here in California. I've been through so much hell, but I keep fighting and I keep pressing. Understand that the devil doesn't kick a dead horse. If you're sitting here on Broadway and you say, oh, you know, my life's pretty good. The devil doesn't bother me none. It's because you're not walking on the narrow way. Because when you start walking on the narrow way, the enemy's coming for you. And you better get ready to swing back. He's going to hit on you. You know why? And what the Lord showed me. As soon as you say, I'm taking my eyes off the things of this world. I'm taking my eyes off the idol. And I'm shifting my focus to what God has for me. The enemy says, no, 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 no. I start walking. To the narrow path i start my, making my way to jesus the enemy says nope i'm gonna hit you boom somebody in your family a situation comes out of nowhere and it hits you to turn your gaze and to turn your direction to get your focus off of what god had for you you was going in this direction and he said no way boom the bible says count it not strange the devil's trying to get you to look back and turn back and go back to that old place. Go back to that old you. You said, man, I'm gonna be like Jesus. And then somebody breaks your heart, boom. Now you wanna go back to cheating and, and, and doing what you used to do and fornicating and drinking again. No, 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 no. You gotta get encouraged. When the enemy hits you, boom, I'm gonna keep coming. When the enemy hits you, boom, now I'm not looking back. I'm not going back to who I used to be, boom. Matter of fact, you hit me, pow. I'm hitting back with praise and worship. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a fight. It is a fight. He's going to hit you, but this is what a lot of Christians do. I don't want to get hit. As soon as I get hit, as soon as somebody talks about me, you know what? Maybe Marcus Rogers is right. Maybe he is led by the Spirit. Maybe, you know, I see the way people persecute him and talk about him. 
Maybe some of the things that he's saying is, is really true. Maybe, maybe I need to step off the broad path and step on the narrow path. Boom, get hit by peer pressure and bullying to knock you back onto the broad path. That's what a lot of Christians do. As soon as we get hit one time, we throw in the towel and we quit. Hey, when you throw in the towel, God throws it right back at you. Get back in there. Get back in there and fight. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But the problem is we don't believe the scriptures. We go to church and we sing and we get emotional and we do our little dance, but we don't really believe the scripture. That's why God allows you to go through the fire, through the fire to be on fire. He says, look, boom, you enter into a test, you enter a trial, bam, the flames are all around you. You're sweating. You say, man, why am I going through this? I don't get it. I don't understand. I want to run back the other way. But if I don't quit and I keep going through the fire, eventually I'm going to come to the other side. And that test is going to become a testimony. That mess is going to become a message. And I might not get it. But when I get to the other side and I look back, I'm going to see that everything that God burnt off of me. And I'm going to see why I had to go through what I went through. The Bible says it was good that I was afflicted. It was good that you hurt me. It was good that you left me. It was good that you betrayed me, Judas. It was good that Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit. It was good that David was rejected. It was good that Adam fell. Because through that, God has a plan. And God has a purpose. And if you begin to just trust him, it might be lonely. You might be on the narrow path. But remember, Brahm is the way that leads to destruction and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life hey guys i've shared my testimony with you guys many times i went through my court case with the army i'm about to be out of the army after 13 years that was my security i was like yes i'm gonna get a retirement check when i turn 38 i'm getting out of the army i don't know how things are gonna fall into place and i have to fight against fear every day but you know what happens people people message me people bless me People are so into my life. People are purchasing my book. God has given me uh, uh, opportunities to work, opportunities to serve. And he's showing me. He's going to take care of me. And he's going to take care of you. If you take a stand for God, he'll take a stand for you. I love you guys. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Share this video. I feel this is probably the most important video I've ever done. And I know this Sunday I'll preach the most important message I've ever preached. New levels. Be blessed.